I recently did a video on what Lantern called I think Spider-Man should be in, a uh, link to which is in this video's description. And I've now decided to do a video on Spider-Man's rogues gallery and what Lantern calls the I think are right for them, especially since so many people have requested this video. Now, for those who don't know, the Lantern Corps are essentially a group of organizations who have rings that give the wearer superpowers. And these rings are actually powered by emotions. And in order to wield one, you have to have a strong connection to that emotion. Otherwise, it's basically just a shiny bit of jewelry. And these different Lantern Corps are hope, love, willpower, rage, fear, avarice, and compassion. And there are two other Lantern Corps that aren't technically part of the emotional spectrum, they're actually separate, and these are Death and Life. But we will still be counting these two as viable options for Lantern Corps for these supervillains. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Green Goblin The Green Goblin is, in many people's minds, Spider-Man's greatest enemy. And though Spider-Man does have many enemies, none have really dealt as much damage to him as the Green Goblin. Most notably is the time that he killed Peter Parker's first love, Gwen Stacy by throwing her off a bridge. And though he could fit into a few different lands and cores, I think the main contenders are Rage and Fear. Rage makes sense as the Green Goblin is basically insane. He is Norman Osborn's psychopathic second personality and he is about as unhinged as they come. And he has frequently lost it as Spider-Man and been obsessed with getting revenge on him and ending Spider-Man's life. But at the same time, the Green Goblin is extremely scary. I mean, as I said, he is considered by many to be Spider-Man's greatest enemy. And as such, few villains have the ability to scare Peter Parker like the Green Goblin does. And Spider-Man isn't the only one. A lot of Marvel characters are scared of this guy. Even his costume and mask are symbols of fear. He is dressed as an evil goblin a creature that was made up to tell scary stories and scare children into obeying the rules. So his outfit is literally one inspired by terror, much like a Halloween costume, which again is of course meant to scare people. And so although rage is a possibility, fear seems to make the most sense. After all, he is clearly setting himself up to be feared. Otherwise, why would he choose that costume and persona? He also does scare a lot of people as any insane villain would. And most of all, the Green Goblin loves that people fear him, and he revels in this terror he spreads. And so, if a fear ring came to him, he would 100% take it. So to me, this does seem to be the best Lantern Corps for him. Norman Osborn Now, that was the Lantern Corps for the Green Goblin, but Norman Osborn is another matter entirely. While they are the same person, Norman is very much a separate personality, and so in his case, the Lantern Corps changes. And though many people do fear him as well, it's mainly because they're scared he'll turn into the Green Goblin and go nuts. Though during his dark reign, when he was head of the security agency Hammer, I think the Norman was actually scarier than the Green Goblin, as he had an insane amount of power. Which is the crux of his character, as Norman absolutely loved this power, as it is everything that he has ever wanted as he has constantly lusted after money and power with a furious passion for his entire life, and he has coveted it, and everything he does and everything he wants is all to do with controlling others and having power over them. The money, the very Oscorp company and its research, it's all about power. And so for him, he clearly belongs in the lands and core of avarice, because it just matches his personality and goals in life perfectly. And I can't really see any other contenders, well, technically I can see some other contenders, but I think Avarice is clearly ahead of them all. Venom Now, many people have shared their bodies with the Venom symbiote, but I'm going to discuss the Eddie Brock version of Venom, because in my opinion, this is the classic version of Venom. Now, the symbiote itself boosts adrenaline and aggression in their hosts, as they essentially seem to feed off of it. They don't always feed off it in some versions, but in a lot of versions they do, and even if they don't, they're definitely increasing aggression levels which gives us the first clue as to his Lantern Corps. Now, in recent years, Venom has changed. He's changed quite a lot, and he's become more of an anti-hero. In fact, the Venom film went to great lengths to make him out as an anti-hero, rather than making him a bad guy, because his actual original comic book roots are of him being an insane, angry, resentful, and hate-filled guy who just blamed Spider-Man for everything wrong in his life and wanted to make him suffer, bleed, and die. And while Venom is undoubtedly a scary guy, because of this rage-fueled desires controlling his actions, 
I have to go with the Red Lantern Core of Rage. Because the ring also amplifies rage itself, and so with the symbiote and the ring working together, it would be, well, a symbiotic relationship, as they'd feed off of each other and basically make Venom angrier and angrier, which in turn would actually make him more powerful, because the ring is powered by anger. And I know this being a symbiotic relationship is a little bit on the nose, but this Lantern Corps does just seem perfect for Venom. Now, as I said, his character has changed in recent years to make him more of an anti-hero. But even then, he does still execute criminals, even those committing petty crimes of theft. So this must be coming from a dark place of rage and revenge. I mean, you don't just kill whoever you want if you're a happy and well-balanced guy. So although I'm mainly talking about the original Mad Dog version of Venom, I still think his new persona belongs in the Red Lantern Corps as well. Because he wants to make criminals pay the ultimate price. And the Red Lanterns aren't just about rage. A very large part of what they are is about revenge and making criminals pay. And they also pretty much execute any criminal they come across, which is one of the reasons so many of them are labelled as villains. So it's safe to say that Venom would definitely fit in with this crowd. After all, they would be completely happy with him going nuts and killing as many people as he wanted, so long as it was getting revenge for people who'd felt injustice. Craven. Now, Craven is many things, and over the years he has had a lot of changes made to his character. And in some parts of his past, he would easily fall into the Rage Lantern Corps, as he has lost his temper frequently and at many times been fueled by his rage and his desire to get revenge on Spider Man or on others as well. But the Rage Lantern Corps isn't really light for him, he's not really a mad dog of anger, especially considering how he has acted in more recent years. The way he has hunted and tracked down Spider-Man to prove himself superior was never actually about anger or fear or even getting petty revenge. Not really. It was just to prove that he could. Because Craven has set himself the goal of wanting to be Spider-Man, and so he set out to do it logically and methodically. And really, this makes me think his best fit would actually be the Lantern Corps of Will, which is quite rare for a villain I know, but he does seem to have just an insane amount of willpower. He works out what he wants and then he focuses on it with a laser-like accuracy and he sets carefully laid plans out to achieve his goals, not getting caught up in other emotions and deviating from the plan, as many other Spider-Man villains would. And in fact, many other Spider-Man villains do do this. No, Craven goes about completing his task logically, without any other emotions getting in the way. Now, to be fair, he hasn't always been like this and he hasn't always acted like this. But I think the Craven that we've seen in more recent years is actually the best version of his character, or at least the one with the best written stories. And that Craven is one with an intense willpower. He knows what he wants and he works non-stop until he gets it. So to me, the Lantern Corps of willpower just seems to be the right fit for him. The Kingpin. Now, the Kingpin's Lantern Corps is so obvious that it barely needs to be discussed, but we will touch on it briefly. Though the Kingpin is feared by many, and he is feared by a lot of people, and he has had his moments of great rage, and he has personally killed, or had other people, kill countless people over the years. But even taking all that into consideration, he still can only be in the Orange Lantern Corps of Avarice. As the only thing that he has ever cared about is money and power. There is literally nothing more important to him than that, in pretty much every version of his character. And though he does love his family, especially his wife Vanessa, and we actually see this quite a lot in the Netflix Daredevil series, his first love is still always power. In fact, in the Punisher Max comic, which shows the Kingpin's origin, he actually sacrifices his firstborn son in order to become the Kingpin. Even though he thought that he loved his son more than anything, and was actually doing everything he was doing for him, but in that moment he realised that he wasn't acquiring all this wealth and power for his son, he was doing it for himself so he chose to let his son die. And then straight after this, as his wife is crying, he says, it's okay, we can just have another son. And so that clearly says to me that love is not his primary motivation. He may love Vanessa, or at least think that he loves her, but when push comes to shove, I think he'd choose power over her. It's his greed that drives him, and it's the one thing that led to him actually making himself the kingpin in the first place. And so the Avarice Lantern Corps is literally the only choice for him. Carnage. Like Venom, many people have been inhabited by the Carnage symbiote, but I'm going to focus on the Cletus Cassidy version. Now, while the symbiotes do really live on rage and encourage it to come out of their hosts, 
With Cassidy, I actually don't think it works the same way. You see, Cassidy is insane, completely and utterly, diagnosed as insane by doctors and everything. And he is never really angry, not like the rest of us get angry. I know some people are going to disagree with that because he does seem to be this mad ball of rage at many times. But I don't think it's actually fueled by rage. It might be coming out like that, but I think it comes from a darker place. Because his motivation doesn't seem to come out of an angry place. But much like the Joker, it comes from a place of pure madness. And he also seems to be having the time of his life when he is caused an anarchy. He's not really doing it because he's angry at the world. He's just nuts and carefree and he loves to hurt, maim, torture and kill. So to me that excludes rage from his possibilities and it only leaves three real options for him. Death, compassion or fear. Now death I don't think is the right fit for him as death isn't so much his obsession. He does like killing people and he has killed a lot of people but I think it's more about causing anarchy He'd rather cause a load of destruction than take time just killing a few people here and there. It's all about just mass anarchy. And he's definitely a contender to be in the Death Lantern Corps because he has killed countless people in his life and he certainly enjoys killing more than anything. But I do think he's better suited for the other Lantern Corps. Now compassion is a definite 100% possibility. Now you may wonder why but the reason's very simple. In order to be in the Compassion Corps you either have to have a great amount of compassion or no compassion at all. It's a bit of an odd lantern call like this and it doesn't really work that way for the others. And Cassidy has no compassion at all. In fact, he'd actually fit in just fine with the other Indigo tribe members, as most of them are also insane mass murderers. So he could easily belong in this call because it's kind of his group. And as for fear, well, anyone who isn't scared of carnage is either lying or they're lying because an insane mass murderer with superpowers is literally the worst thing that can attack a person. Any normal human wouldn't stand a chance with this guy, even if they were decked out with as many guns as they could carry. He is terrifying, and we should all be afraid of him, so fear is definitely a 100% possibility for him. And really, this comes down to personal choice. As I say, I think fear or compassion do make more sense, but you could easily go for either of these. And the only reason I'm going to go with the one I'm going for is because Cassidy is so insane and dangerous and completely compassionless that I think the Indigo Lantern Corps of Compassion does make sense. Because, as I said, he would just fit in perfectly with the other Indigo tribe members, as most of them are exactly as nuts and murder happy as he is. And I also think that him getting the Compassion Ring would be far more interesting than him just getting more superpowers and wreaking havoc with the Fear Ring. After all, we've seen him run around causing anarchy with his superpowers for years. So from a storytelling point of view, compassion would be more fun. And I'd also be interested to see what the compassion ring does to the symbiote. Because yes, it would give Cassidy compassion, but if it didn't affect Carnage as well, then he may actually leave him and seek out a new host. Which means this ring could potentially be a cure for Cassidy, and a great way to deal with the villain once and for all. Now I know a lot of people are going to disagree with this choice, and that's completely fine. But if you actually look at Cassidy's character, you can't deny that he is absolutely insane and that he has literally no compassion. So although you may think he's better for another Lantern Corps, he does definitely qualify for compassion. Sandman. Now this one's actually a bit different from the others, because although Sandman is still a supervillain, unlike most of Spider-Man's rogues gallery, he doesn't actually seem to have any mental impairments or extreme negative emotions. In fact, the usual contenders of fear, death, rage and compassion don't really apply for him. And the same can be said for Will and Avarice, because they just don't seem right for him at all. No, I think there are only two possibilities for him, and that is actually either love or hope. Now, in some versions, he has a family that he wants to take care of. I'm thinking mainly of the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films, which although that third one was actually a god-awful film, it did still show him being motivated by wanting to provide for his daughter. And in this case, love makes the most sense, as it seems to be the main driving force of his character, at least this version of him. But in other versions, he doesn't have a family quite like this, and he's not looking to take care of a family, he's only looking to take care of himself. As he puts it, he wants a big score, so that he can land enough money that he can retire and live like a king. And although that immediately seems like a candidate for avarice, the difference is that he just wants to get one big score so he's set for years. 
He doesn't want to keep stealing and stealing forever so that he can attain as much wealth and power in ever increasing mounts as a lot of other villains do. He just wants to get enough so that he can retire and live a good life. So that isn't really the full on greed of the Avarice Lands and Court. Because let's be honest, every single one of us has that motivation. We all just want to be rich and set for life, but we're not all candidates for the Avarice Court, so it's not really right for him. With that being said, there are some versions where he is more greedy, but generally speaking in his main version, I don't think Avarice is his sole motivation. In fact, I think that he is really a good candidate for hope. Hope that he can give up being a criminal and become something better. Even in regards to his daughter in that Tobey Maguire film, he has hope that he can provide for her and give her the life that she always wanted. And in other versions of his character, he does want to make up for the mistakes of his past, in some even becoming a hero. So I think it does make sense that he has hope. Because although most versions of Sandman don't have this story of him loving his kid, I mean some do, but mainly Sandman is, as I say, just looking for that big score. And even though he's a villain, which normally means they're not going to be in the Hope Lands and Core, I think hope is still right for him. Because throughout his entire criminal career, he has never once given up on this dream of having a better life. No matter how many times he's been beaten and locked away, and he's been beaten and locked away a lot, he always comes back and always goes back to the life of crime. Because he's never lost the hope that he'll land that big score and that he'll have the life he's always wanted. And I think his sole motivation is hope hope that he can achieve this goal. So for me, he belongs in the Blue Lantern Corps of Hope. Rhino The Rhino is a rampaging supervillain whose main tactic in battle, and indeed his whole point of existing, is to be big and strong and smash anything that gets in his way. Kind of like an evil Hulk. And just like the Hulk, rage would seem to best suit his talents and demeanour. Now there have been many different rhinos over the years, and different versions of his character across all of the Spider-Man continuities. But they all do seem to share one trait, and that is a short fuse. It doesn't take much for Spider-Man to get to him and to manipulate the rhino, or lure him into a trap by making him charge at Spider-Man in anger, and then running straight into a wall or something else and getting hit. Because the rhino is just an angry guy and none of the other cores seem to even come close to his personality. He doesn't really set out to kill or instill fear, he isn't motivated by love, and he doesn't really have a lack of compassion or great amounts of compassion. An argument could be made that Avarice motivates him as he is a criminal, and let's be honest, pretty much all criminals immediately are a bit of a candidate because they're literally stealing to get loads of stuff. And Rhino does steal stuff, or at the very least, expect to get great amounts of compensation for the work he does. But it's not really the driving force of his character. In most versions, he seeks the power of the Rhino, just so he can be big and strong, and is tough enough to be able to fight his enemies. Or to put it another way, he wants to get revenge. And the Rage Lands and Core, as I've said, is all about revenge. And even in other versions of his character, where he's stuck in a metal suit, and furious that he's trapped within his armour, he is still a very angry guy, and like I say, pretty much all the different versions of his character all seem to share this trait. They are angry and they want revenge. So really, Rage is the only lantern court for him. The Black Cat Now everyone in this video has unquestionably been a foe of Spider-Man, but in Black Cat's case, she has been both a foe and a friend. But even so, I'm still counting her as part of his rogues gallery, even if she is his femme fatale. But because of this role she plays, and the fact that a large part of her character and her story arcs is all about her romantic relationship with Spider-Man, my first thought for her is the Love Lantern Corps, as she has always shown her strong feelings for Spider-Man and does seem to be powerfully motivated by them. But with that being said, her lavish lifestyle and the fact that she is a cat burglar who literally steals tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions every year, well, she certainly has ties to the avarice community. After all, at this point in her career, she has more than enough money. She probably has more than she could even spend in the rest of her lifetime. And she definitely has more than she needs. But still, she continually goes after more. Though in some ways, it does seem to be more about the thrill of crime rather than the cash. But then she has at times quit being a thief and become a hero. But the thrill of that wasn't actually enough for her, as she still wanted to get large amounts of cash as well, and eventually went back to being a thief. Which to me says that it's not about the frill, or at least it's not just about the frill, it's also about getting the reward. So that does again sound like avarice. 
Though I do have to say in her defence that she does mainly steal from people who are scumbags, mob bosses, drug dealers, people who sell humans as slaves, and basically the kind of people who really deserve to have their fortune stolen. But the thing is, if all she cared about was the money, then why would she even attempt to give up theft and go straight? Why would she want to rob criminals and scumbags specifically? If all she wanted was more money, then surely she'd just go after whoever would make her the most cash from robbing them, regardless of whether or not they were good people. But instead, she targets criminals specifically. And the reason for this comes back to love. She went straight because of her feelings for Spider-Man, and this is the same reason that she robs from bad people. Now it could be argued that this is actually a form of compassion, as she wants to help her fellow man by weakening the criminals. And to a certain extent that may be the case. But really, I think it's Spider-Man who has encouraged her to keep up this Robin Hood style of crime. And even though she only gives to herself, she is still only taking from those who deserve it. So I'm thinking that love is right for her. She definitely qualifies to be in the Avarice Lantern Corps, to a certain extent, but her love for Spider-Man keeps that greed in check. And I think that shows that her love is a stronger part of her, and that she does deserve to be in the Star Sapphire Lantern Corps. And that is the Lantern Corps that I think Spider-Man's Rose Gallery should be in. Do you agree with my choices? Or do you think they belong in different Lantern Corps altogether? Be sure to let us know in the comments, along with whether you'd like to see another one of these Lantern Corps videos, or more members of Spider-Man's Rose Gallery. And of course, which villains you'd like to see feature in it. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.